guys, I'm glad you came back. So in the last couple of episodes, it's been selling baby goats. Um, we're kicking off breeding season. We did hive inspections. Now we're breaking another goat to, I won't say breaking, I really dislike the word breaking when it comes to animals, just because I'm not breaking them. I'm just familiarizing them and desensitizing them to milk stand training and getting them to know, hey, if you stand still, this goes a lot faster. So here's a clip from the last episode, which was actually a couple minutes ago for me, of Rapunzel's first time milking. Roll the clip. Well, there's one winner in all this. She's definitely not crying over any spilt milk. Yeah. There was some spilt milk, but no tears, so that's good. Elmo's still enjoying the fruits of my labor that have been all dropped on the floor, which was okay. I didn't expect, really, whenever you start to stand train a goat or milk stand train or just train them to stand for milking at all. It's probably not a really good expectation to go into it thinking that you're going to get usable milk. I've had many a goat that even for their first time fooled me into thinking I'm gonna get milk and then promptly tap danced into my bucket of milk and rendered it cat food which the cats love so it's not like anything goes to waste here but I, mean, I didn't get any milk. So why are we milking her? The babies are gone. Rapunzel just weaned two kids, but she was still making enough milk to supply those kids with feedings every day. And that can get a little hard on her system, but it's even worse if I let it go without milking her. The reason for that being is it causes tenderness. Um, it allows bacteria to get up into the other as well as mastitis. And mastitis is a big thing for dairy goats because it can, it can quite frankly ruin a beautiful udder. And if left untreated, it can like ruin the udder completely where that doe won't be able to nurse a kid off that side of her udder off that specific teat that maybe took the brunt of it. She might not be able to have kids at all after destroying both sides of her udder with untreated mastitis. So that's why we're milking. We wanna take that pressure off and she's a dairy goat guys. This is her purpose. Her purpose is to supply us with milk. I'm just gonna go ahead and give you some tips and tricks of what's helped me stand train a goat. But it's gonna take me a couple days to get all of it together to present to you guys. So I will see you guys tomorrow when we milk Rapunzel again. Until then. Goats love routine. Give them a routine, they'll surprise you every time. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. You enjoying your food? Now, guys, I know that's a lot of food, but I just want to give her enough to keep her still while my hands are in this area right here. See, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Just a little iodine dip on that. Iodine dip on, oh, that's not enough. Here we go. Here we go. We'll wipe that off. Good girl. It's okay. This is okay. You're okay. You're okay. We're iodine dipping because that's going to clean her udder before we start. And like, really, I don't like to even consider milking them when they're this fuzzy. I don't know if you guys can see that. How fuzzy she is. Like right, right through here. She's really fuzzy. So that's a lot of hair that can get in my milk. But yeah. We're not really doing this for consumption today, so this is just a, we're really wanting her just to get used to this. And look, Elmo's waiting for that spilt milk. Let's hope Rapunzel does not oblige her. So, yeah. 
One of the biggest things for them, she kicks a lot, but I don't really like to hobble. But it's good to have hobbles in place if you need. The big thing is once you get a hold, whether she starts kicking or tamp dancing, whether you've got a milk can in there or not, do not take your hand off the udder. Because if you do, it just teaches her that she can kick you off, so. And they do a lot better as long as they've got food in front of them. The moment she uh, ran out of food yesterday, the tap dancing began. You're not wanting to give me anything today, are you? But that's okay, we're actually trying to dry her up. And I'm massaging right now because I feel like she's holding back. She still has a little bit of mass in here. So sometimes massaging helps them let their milk down because believe it or not, goats can hold back their milk. So sometimes if I have a doe that doesn't wanna give me milk and say her babies are still with her and I've separated them, I might bring the babies in here and let them mat and let her see them and she'll probably let down. Now keeping the babies off the teats while you're trying to milk, it's a different story, but it does kind of help her um, associate you milking with letting down. So I'm not gonna get very much more out of her, but you guys can see she's already, she's calmed down quite a bit and it'll get easier every time. She's actually even opened up a leg for me. So. Alright, looks like we've got a little bit for Elmo to have there. That's a good girl. That's a good girl, honey. That's a good girl. <sighs> so this was day numero dos. And she's already really improved. I'm just kind of getting her used to the idea of me milking her and handling her udders and realizing that just because she kicks or tap dances, I'm not going to let go. So that's one of the big things with these guys. You cannot let go. Um, the moment the goat realizes that it's quicker if they stop struggling and just let you milk, the easier it's going to be for you to milk. It makes it a lot more um, enjoyable of an experience. If you constantly are letting go of the udder when they start to kick, you're not going to get anywhere. They're going to figure out if I kick and carry on, they kind of let go and, and it just, and they know they're in control and you can't let them know they're in control. Even though all of us crazy goat ladies, no, they really do rule like our whole lives. So there's that. But this is day two, so I'm really excited. At this point, I think Elmo is going to be my number one cheerleader in here to get this goat milk because she is definitely the one benefiting on uh, the spoils of war here. Are you ready to get milked? Are you ready? Go on. I know the door's not open. Oh, wait like a lady, huh, June? Please don't. Are you waiting like a lady? Well, hold on. Go on, hop up there. Hop on up there. Get your head in. No, get your head in. I know, there's no food yet, but there's going to be. There's no, oh, there. One interesting fact about Rapunzel, you guys see this tail flapping right here? She's in heat. Poseidon has been telling me like crazy, hey, this girl is a... Uh, She's in heat and ready for some action, but we just weaned her kids off of her and I'm going to give her at least another two to three weeks, which will make her three or four weeks, four months after being fresh to be bred. So I'm waiting for her next tail cycle, but her tail just keeps a twitching. So this is her last night being milked on film, but we've waited three days since the last time because she was really low in her production last time. And we're trying to dry her off, so I really want her body to start focusing on replenishing herself after having kids and after having um, nursed them and me milking and getting ready for her next breeding cycle because she's dairy. Her body should be able to take this um, this cycle that we're putting her through and we really need to get her back on track with the rest of our dose. So let's see how she does. Okay, so, all right, so that was a little bit more rough than I wanted it to be. I really thought she'd do a lot better today, but I'm guessing because we're trying to dry her off and that means we're waiting two to three days between milkings because she doesn't have enough in there even like to really 
like make it tight or uncomfortable. So, but I think she's still doing good. She let me milk for a little bit there and then I really think it's because like the cat was down below her, like jaws waiting for milk to come <laughs> from heaven above. So, um, not to mention the dogs are in here running around like crazy. So in review, some of the tips that we've covered in this video so far about how to train your doe to stand politely on your milk stand and allow you to milk. And really, like just there, we were tap dancing, she was struggling, she was kicking, she was trying to get my hands off of her udder. So number one, keep your hand on the udder at all times until they're nice and calm. Sometimes I wait until they're calm enough to put their head back down in their food bowl and then I'll start milking again. And that leads me into number two, make sure you have plenty of treats and food to keep them occupied and their attention elsewhere instead of what you're trying to do like with their udder because really it's probably not an easy feeling to get used to i don't think i would ever get used to it so um number three if you have a doe that's still after all that doesn't want to be still find yourself some hobbles you can find them on um valley vet supply you can make your own out of um ties there are a lot of different ways to make your own hobbles i know weedham and reap has got a couple different types of hobbles um Crystal over at Blue Cactus Dairy Goats has a couple of different types of hobbles. Make sure that you try these different scenarios out and see what works best for you and your goat. Um, I'm trying to think what else, guys. Just make sure you're clean about it and don't let them go too long. The cat's over here trying to already steal her prize. You're gonna get it, just hold on. You're gonna get it, Elmo, just hold on. Gosh, nobody here is patient. There's your um, fourth tip. Patience is a virtue. Just keep at it. Some does just are not strong at being still and letting you milk them. So if you have does that are withholding their milk, it's okay to massage their udder to encourage a letdown. Or sometimes if I have an extremely difficult doe that still has a kid maybe on her, I'll bring the kid in to my milking room just so that she can see and hear and smell. And sometimes that stimulates them to let their milk down too. But right now that's the only tips I've got for you. And it's the last time I'm gonna bring you guys along for um, this with Rapunzel. And the reason for that being is we're trying to dry her up to get her ready for breeding season. So with that being said, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and call it quits on this one. I hope you found the video helpful. Drop in the comments how you think Rapunzel did. Or if you milk your own goats, let me know some of the tips and tricks you might try to get your does a little bit more well acquainted with being on the milk stand and accepting being milked. But until next time, thanks so much for being here. Drop us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe. Hey, subscribing is free. So stay healthy out there and be kind to one another, and we'll catch you in the next one.